minutes. Go ahead, Eric. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I would like to uh, pose this question to uh, each of our three witnesses, and I thank them for uh, for being here with us today. And um, a lot of what we've heard today, and what, of course what we know, uh, is that uh, food security is a very complex issue. There are many aspects um, uh, that have to go into it, including um, uh, transportation and infrastructure. And of course, in the north, uh, uh, we have many infrastructure gaps and transportation uh, difficulties. And I, and I truly believe that the government um, can and should do much more to help fill some of those gaps. So uh, uh, perhaps following the lead of my colleague, Mr. Vierson, I'll, I'll start in the West with the Yukon and, and we can work our way uh, East from there. And, and I'd like uh, to just have uh, comments from each of our witnesses on uh, how those transportation infrastructure difficulties um, uh, play a uh, role in uh, in the prevalence of food insecurity and and what uh, the federal government can do to help uh, help address that thank you uh, I think if, speaking about our current situation some of the concern that we would have uh, to at this particular time is what happens to regional airlines uh, where we know the pressure that we're in across the country we know that we have a couple of major airlines that support um, the travel internationally and across this country, but probably all, all the most of us online here would have a regional airline that plays an important role for us. Um, you know, we we know that the bigger airlines, uh, WestJet or an Air Canada, is not going to fly to Dawson City or or Old Crow every two days to fill the need that our regional airlines um, hold. So I think I would just say that it's very important for us to continue to support um, these folks across the country, and I'm sure it would be the same in. Um, NWT, uh, Quebec, Labrador, you name, you name it. So I uh, knew it. Uh, when it comes to our road access, we have about 5,000 kilometers of all season roads. And uh, of course, for um, those on the line, you, you can imagine if it's not being shipped or flown into Alaska, it's dry, it's coming through Whitehorse. I mean, the Alaska highway uh, has been a, a major artery to connect our continent and, and our countries for a long time. So I think from that perspective, we, there's, it's, there's good infrastructure in place and it costs a lot to maintain those roads. And uh, we've uh, had an agreement with the United States for a number of years and that's come to an end and that really maintains the Alaska highway. And there was a transfer that had, uh, that was, that was put in place from the U S to uh, Canada to do that work. And it inevitably landed in uh, the financial framework of the Yukon government. And we would deploy that. So I think getting that back in place is going to be key because that highway has always been, uh, that's our central artery. The, I think the third would be as we think about innovation and we move forward, if we look at the conversation we're having across the country, we, we are really going to need to figure out for long haul trucking, how we can expedite the process of them pivoting towards different fuel sources. Um, our, our number one um, form of emissions is heating and our second is transportation. So for us, that's really the, the sweet spot to look at if we want to reduce emissions and we just rolled out a new climate change plan for the next 10 years. And we're going to have to figure that out. So I, I would say that if there's anywhere to help, it's going to be how do we make sure that all those trucks coming out of Alberta, which basically a lot of our product is all coming out of Edmonton, how do we make sure that those trucks, um, those business owners can make the decisions to use different, a different type of, of um, innovative machine to get it, something up the highway? And how are they going to be able to make those decisions because of the extraordinary capital costs on the front end of making those decisions? But that's what we need to be able to do if we're going to change a bit of how we do this in a healthier way, because inevitably it's going to take us a while to be able to do the growth we want. And we are going to still be purchasing from across the country and the United States as we do now. About Thank a minute you. left. Yeah. I'd like the opportunity for uh, uh, the other witnesses to comment on that with the limited time uh, available. Someone, Tracy. Thank you. I just wanted to echo Minister Palau's comments about um, supporting our regional airlines. Um, we are obviously very jealous of the Yukon Territories road systems. A majority of our communities are fly-in, so that would actually be a critical um, continued support for us um, for regional airlines. And as well um, with the impacts of climate change, um, we actually as well have a climate change strategy and keeping an eye on that, um, there will be obviously continued impacts on our road systems, our limited road systems. And um, I just wanted to flag that, um, you know, I mentioned the Anti-Poverty Coalition meeting next month. And really for us, it's um, understanding um, 
how our indigenous governments, what they're seeing as priorities for food security moving forward. So look forward, in, look forward to sharing that information with our federal colleagues so that we can work together. Thank you. And very briefly, Lindsay. Uh, for Nunavut, I would say it's uh, it's all 25 fly-in communities, so um, a lot of the discussion is around um, uh, airport infrastructure, so runways, a lot of them are gravel runways or short runways, um, as well as uh, building uh, small craft harbors or deep sea ports. And thank you all. Um, Yvonne Jones, it's your 